idea was born out of somebody going to your website, presumably a member or a prospective member, and they do a search. And typically what gets returned are results from your content management system. So in this case, web page 497 hits, or over here on this site, web page 280 hits. And the idea is, is the content in our content management system, is that the only place where we have our content? Probably not. If you were watching at the top of the presentation where I had this graphic, you probably have content in a bunch of different spots. Maybe you have a, your journal provider and maybe you have events, maybe you have a community and so forth. So the idea is that when you come to a search that's doing federated search, you wanna search beyond just the content that's stored in your content management system. And I was gonna show you some examples of that in action today on this call. So from most vendors' perspective, if you're a software company, and this includes ASI, the makers of IMS too, every client would use their offerings and that's it. <laughs> they've got IMS Rise for their website, they've got IMS for the community, they've got IMS for their store. The reality is many orgs are all over the place in the tools and systems they use, and that's okay. They maybe have a learning management system like Blue Sky or Pearson. They have an association management system or CRM like IMS. They have a job board like Boxwood or Job Target. They have a journal or a magazine that's over at Highwire or Elsevier or Sage. They've got Facebook, they've got Twitter, they have a YouTube channel, they have a community like Higher Logic or Small World Community. And what Federated Search does is it connects to these different repositories of content. And good Federated Search does this at the root level programmatically. So let me show you an example. Before we were over here on this site and for example, there was 2,700 jobs that matched the search I made. Look at all these filters that show up over here on the left. Think about your members, maybe they came to the site, they weren't looking for a job, but this caught their eye. Hmm, there's 2,700 jobs that match my search and they may come over here and be interested. Hmm, okay, I'm in Virginia, is there anything for me there? Yeah, okay. And I could go ahead and select the particular area that I'm interested in and I can narrow down my search even further to find jobs that are tagged for my profession and information that's important to me. And I think what's lost oftentimes when someone's going to the site is they would have to go directly to the job board to find a job. I'm specifically coming to the site to look for a job and I'll go to the job board. But what about those members who aren't specifically looking for a job? Or what about those members who aren't specifically looking for a journal article? But something comes up in the search results that piques their interest and like, huh, I didn't even know that that journal article was there. This is really important because you wanna be able to get to all of that content that's past the paywalls. And you wanna get all of its rich metadata, the tags, the categories assigned to the content, the author, the dates, and other classifications you may have available like cost or region or specialties. And you want to show this to your users. I liken it to you ran into Target to go get some toilet paper and you come out with a grocery cart full of all sorts of stuff. And that's exactly what you want your members and your prospective members to do on your website. You want them to come to your website and do a search. And maybe they were looking for one thing in particular, but then they see, look at all this other rich content that's here that I didn't even know was there. If you're doing your job well with federated search, that's what happens. And that's what makes federated search so exciting. And I saw there was a question here from Jennifer about searching PDFs. And the answer is yes. So you could have over here, for example, um, and this isn't the case for this particular implementation, but let's say your section newsletters are PDFs. There's no reason why you couldn't say these are PDFs that are being searched here. And it's searching inside of the PDFs, Jennifer, to answer your question. And that's, again, the beauty of federated search because you could take it one step further and you can say, show me PDFs that are tagged for trusts and estates, and I only want the recent stuff, 2019. If you have the information that's categorized in this way, you can use federated search to hold the hand of the user and to drive them where they need to be. Inside of your organization, you may hear things like, gosh, I don't know how we drive traffic to our fill in the blank. That fill in the blank could be your community, your learning management system, your bookstore. How do we show the value of our fill in the blank? 
job board, YouTube channel, magazine. What are some of the best practices for tying content to our website from our blog, marketing automation software? Whatever it may be, that's where Federated Search can really help you. There used to be an ad years ago, and it was for this magazine called New Homes Guide. And you may remember this. And it was this frustrated couple, and they were looking for a new house. And they finally picked up a copy of New Homes Guide. And the wife on the passenger seat exclaims, I didn't even know these homes were there. And if Federated Search is implemented on your site, that's something that can be very, very helpful because they would say to themselves, your prospective members or your current members, they would say, I didn't even know this content was here. They're good members, they mean well, they're active in your community, but they didn't even know that there was this discussion forum, for example, taking place that had all this rich information in it that they weren't aware of. What's neat about this too is Federated Search has done well, it's thinking about the security, it's thinking about your paywall, it's thinking about the member, non-member dynamic. So for example, on the screen now, you're seeing content in these abstracts. This is members only stuff. So this is a member of this organization that has posted something to a discussion forum. This could just as easily be an abstract snippet from a magazine or a journal. And it's giving a little taste, it's peeling back a layer of the onion and showing, hey, here's an abstract of what this particular hit is about. If the member is interested in this and they click on it, it's gonna send them over to the discussion forum and then it's gonna prompt them to log in. You need to be a member in order to be able to see this content. If you think about that for a minute, and you think about how powerful that is, one of the issues that many organizations face is they have all this rich content, but no one knows it's there or they can't get a taste for what it is. A federated search solution can help you do that. It can show you, here's information that you may be interested in. Yes, that's exactly what I want. It's a journal article from 2006, and it's exactly about the topic that I need to research. Click, you need to be a member. So I either log in as a member, and if this action reinforces the value of my membership for this organization, or click, you need to sign up and be a member in order to be able to see this data. Here's some other examples, and you probably get the idea. Again, here are hits from our magazine, from our publisher. Here are hits from our blog, that's an external WordPress blog that we host somewhere else. Here are our events coming out of our association management system, out of IMAS, for example. Here are discussions from Higher Logic. Here are just regular old web pages from our website that match what it is I'm searching for. The other element, too, with federated search, the old way of doing federated search, I call it, pardon the expression, the poor man's way of doing federated search is we used to have to take all of this external content and we would copy it over to our content management system. So these are all the products, for example, being pulled from an association management system store that are available for people to buy. And the way that we have to, the way we used to have to do federated search is we would take all of this data and we would copy it over into a content management system so that the content management systems search engine could pick it up. If you think about how frustrating that is, not only now do you have two copies of your content and all of your stuff, you also have to deal with jobs that are gonna keep those two pieces of content in sync. I just updated my content last Wednesday and it's still not being reflected in the search back on the CMS side. And that's very, very frustrating. A good federated search leaves the content where it is. It goes to the content and indexes the content in place, even protected content and shows those results right here in the interface. You can even do things like searching social media. You know, many of us at our organizations, we make investments in social media. We have social media managers, for example. At the same time, we also have members, we hear all the time, our members skew older, they're not active on social media, they're not interested in it. But what if they were searching for something on their site and something caught their eye. You know, there's 800 hits on Facebook to our Facebook wall about the topic you just searched for. And maybe there's something interesting that looks good here. So what we've done is you've used federated search in that scenario and you've pushed social media to them. You're not relying on them going, loading fa the Facebook app on their phone or the Twitter app, or even going to one of those websites. You've brought it to them professionally. Same thing with YouTube, for example. You know, maybe a 
maybe your organization has a very active YouTube channel, or maybe you use Vimeo, it doesn't matter. Federated search over those Vimeo and YouTube APIs can pull that content in and say, hey, here are videos that match your search that you may be interested in. And someone said, oh, I never even thought about that. Let me, let me look at that. Would they have ever gone to the YouTube channel separately? Maybe they would have come across the page on your website where you have that video embedded. But what if you could serve the video directly to them? There's all sorts of possibilities when you're thinking about implementing, implementing federated search on your site and some of the cool things it can do. Something else that's interesting is once you have federated search indexing your stuff, you can visualize it in different ways. So all these examples I've shown you today, these are all search results screens. Nothing wrong with that, and that's a good thing. But what if, what if we took that same data and we visualized it in a slightly different way? In this case, a map. This is a member directory. We've already got, Federated Search has already got all of your data indexed, all of your member data from your association management system, IMS, perhaps. And we can say, what if you wanted to use that same data and just come up with a different view of the data? Instead of showing it in a search results, show it this way. I'm looking for a member in New York that is in the 250 to 500 range and that has before school offerings. I can see here the different members that come up. If you can visualize this being your membership directory, your federated search can do things like this. Because federated search is just a fancy way of saying connecting to your data, no matter where it is. It's kind of like a BI tool. If you're familiar with business intelligence, you have financial data in your financial back office, you have financial data in this spreadsheet, you have financial data in this other software you use, and you want to federate it in one dashboard. That's all federated search is. It's taking all of that data and allowing you to interact with it in one spot. But that one spot can then take on different visualizations. It could be a search results page like this, or it could be something like a map like this. It could also be something like a pie chart or a bar chart or pictures icons, whatever you can think of, you can visualize the data that way. Think about this concept too, this content hub concept. Imagine someone coming to one of your sites, and again, this is powered by federated search, and let's say that I'm a marketing professional, and I can say, hey, on our site, we have 366 items that are from our learning management system our community, our bookstore, our YouTube channel, our job board, our magazine, our marketing automation software that's tagged as being for marketing professionals, 366 items. And I could click on that and it would show me those items in more detail. I could narrow them down even further. Or maybe you prefer topic-based navigation. Imagine if you presented to somebody on your homepage, here's everything we've got on cybersecurity, 137 items. Some of, that, some of those 137 items are stored in IMAS. Some of those 137 items are in Sage, our publisher. Some of them are in Blue Sky, our learning management system. Some of them are in Small World Communities, our community platform. Some of them are from Twitter. Whatever you can imagine, this is something that Federated Search can do for you. So on that note, if you remember nothing else from this presentation today, I'm hoping that you'll be able to take home this. And that's this idea that it's possible for your members, your prospective members, to search for content no matter where it is. And you want them to have that moment where they say, I didn't even know this content was there. You want them to have that feeling. And you want them to know, hey, there is content that goes beyond just our content management system and into all these different services that we use, but you're bringing it together for them. Yes, they could go to each one of these services individually and find the content, but you want them to find the content easily. And you don't want them to necessarily have to go and find it at each individual source. You want to collate it all for them together in one spot. Sometimes the answer to finding your content isn't that one product does all of these things for you. Sometimes you want to use the best of breed solution that fits your mission and have that content brought to your members or your prospective members. You also should sometimes think about, sometimes your content isn't even your own stuff. Sometimes you may have partner organizations that you work with, and you may have content that's stored externally. There's an organization that comes to mind, and they curate diversity data from universities that gets reported to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And Federated Search picks up that data via EEOC's publicly available API. 
So there's lots of possibilities for your organization, perhaps, to imagine here that would maybe apply. We talked a little bit about social and about um, connecting with your social media content. Maybe it's a LinkedIn group, or maybe it's a Twitter, or maybe it's Facebook, and bringing that content and surfacing that content for your users on your site. You can also do things, though, that you know, share content that's popular. Maybe your analytics software says, hey, this page is trending. This is a popular page. Good federated search should be able to promote that same content in your search results. You can also do things like featuring content or weighting content. Good federated search can promote that popular content, but sometimes you also may really want to push products that are, for example, from your store over professional development offerings or vice versa. For your organization, you may say, we really want to value our learning management system the most. So we want to favor those search results above all others. It's your search. It should mimic your organizational goals and your business objectives. And sometimes you can get a bit creative. Um, some, some organizations, you can get away with promoting paid sponsor content. So maybe um, the membership directory example I showed you before, maybe that's like a buyer's guide or something similar. And maybe sponsors can promote their content and pay to have their content promoted higher. That's something else you can do. It's not too much different from an organization we're aware of that specifies, listen, we don't care what someone searches for. We always want the annual meeting registration to be the first result. And you can do things like that when you're working with federated search. You can also do things like, uh, you saw me apply various filters today and click here and there. Imagine a member doing this to narrow down a window of what they're interested in and then subscribing to it. Now, whenever new content hits the index that matches their parameters, your federated search software sends them an email. Dear Adam, two new content items about cybersecurity just hit the aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa